Hi, today I want to make a video and talk a little bit about Ficum Sync. I get quite a few emails from people asking me questions about it, and usually once I start to get too many, it's I, that's what prompts me to let me know that I need to make a video on it, so I can just direct you over to that then versus me just trying to text it out on the phone here. So what I want to cover is Ficum Sync. And that's the FICM stands for Fuel Injector Control Module, and SYNC is short for Synchronization. It's what it is is the PCM, the Powertrain Control Module, is it needs to know the crank and the camshaft position. Once it knows the two the positions and it can line them up properly, it knows the timing and the firing order. It can start to fire the injectors. So it's really important that it knows the proper position of it. Otherwise, it's just like if you had a distributor car and the plug wires were on wrong, that's what would happen if the synchronization was wrong. It would, the, the fuel would be going in at wrong time and you have all kinds of issues because diesel doesn't use spark. It uses fuel being injected into the cylinder to make it to start. So it's very important that it knows the position. Now a few things before I show the wiring repair on this job. I want to cover a few things just to try to help you out. The synchronization takes a camshaft position sensor and the crank position sensor. The crank position sensor is also the same one that feeds you RPM. So if you have no sync, but you have live data from the RPM, then most likely there's nothing wrong with your, cam with your crankshaft, which is the one that's on the passenger side underneath the AC compressor. That's your crankshaft position sensor, the shorter one, on the passenger side underneath the AC compressor. And I almost never see issues with it almost hardly ever see genuine equipment sensors fail too on that so you know I, I, a lot of stuff aftermarket's good but a lot of it's bad out there too so if you have don't don't be using the aftermarket sensors on them because i'll take those off all the time and have them but the original equipment ones i actually have more issues with wiring so the, and that's what this video is mostly going to cover doing a proper wire repair and diagnosing it so again if you have the issue with it and you have rpm most likely it's not going to be in the crank sensor or in the wiring to it. Most of the time when we see this issue, it's, it's the wiring or it's a, pro it's a problem with the batteries. So, and just to go back and forth, well, one other thing too. I see a lot of people with a scan gauge inputting it wrong and they'll have their, their input wrong. So before you cut up your wire loom or do anything, I strongly suggest you taking your scan gauge and either trying to re-input it in another position make sure you have it or trying it on another six old truck and that it's because you a lot of times I see it it's just the people that they don't have their input it right in here but if you're using an IDS or something else with it and you have issues with your synchronization not right and you have RPM the next thing I want to make sure or people when they write me or call me or do anything I ask them to make sure the batteries are good because if you have a really weak crank the synchronizations not it doesn't come up right you need the strong voltage you need for all your modules to stay alive. We need to see it. So if you're out there and your crank's just going, rawr, 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 you're not going to have synchronization or it's not going to be accurate enough to fire it. So make sure your crank's good. Make sure everything's good. Make sure your RPM is reading. And if all that issue's good and your gauges are good and you truly know that that's your problem is with it, then uh, like I show on my one video, the no start tips, tricks, and tools, you can get out there and wiggle the wire, which I'll show here in a second where it's at, and see if you can bring sync back. That also confirms that the wiring is bad. So get out there and wiggle it, and if that does come back and your synchronization comes back and starts, I've done them. I've had guys gone for six months, and I have them just turn the corner, get to the gas station, call me up, and tell me it's a no start again. And then we either replace the loom, or there's a lot of people out there that want it to do a wiring repair with it. So that's what I'm doing with this one. From Diesel Truck Parts Direct, he makes long leads on them so we can have, he can make them for you or sell them to you with two feet of wire on them. And then it makes it a whole lot better so you're not splicing in six inches or at the other end of the loom splicing it in again. The least splice the better. Also you want to do the, um, he'll sell them to you already twist it and you can remove the shielding that's on your wiring. So I'll go ahead and show underneath the hood the repair and go about it. And hopefully with me discussing this first, you don't cut into a good loom you made sure that your scanner is reading properly and that your batteries are good, that your crank's good, and that your FICM sync is a result of wiring. Again, because wiring is more common than a sensor, then, then you have a, the bad sensor. So make sure that your, wire, that your 
your scanner's all reading good before you cut up a good loom. To get access to the cam sensor and to replace the wire out of the main loom, we're going to pull off the air filter and also the cold side charger cooler hose here. So uh, uh, first I'm going to remove these two, which I show in other videos. And once these are removed, I'll, I'll go into a little more detail showing the getting, gaining access to the cam sensor wire. The wire comes out of the loom up here, right by the fuel filters. You can see that here, we're going to replace it all the way up into here. You can see the wire down here behind the lower hose. You can see it moving back down behind here. We're going to fish it out because we want to pull it all out and work on it up here. It's a whole lot easier. We just fish it out and we can get gain access in here and pull it out. And that's what's nice about getting the, the cam sensor wire leads from the diesel truck parts direct. It gives you enough wiring here to fix it. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. You can try to reach down through there and unplug it from the top. I actually have best results by going underneath it and reaching up and grabbing it. And it can be tight and hard, so you might want to blow it off or try pushing it on first because it is sometimes it's pretty snug. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. Okay, just so you can find the position the, the, of it where it's at. Here's, I'm underneath the vehicle. This is the lower hose, your steering box pitman arm. If you look up in here, you can see the sensor, the two wire sensor. The clip, the release part is on top. So when you squeeze it, you have to squeeze the release on top of the sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and reach up here and pull it out. Here it is, it's unplugged. Okay, now back up on top is where we want to pull the wires out. And some of them are clipped onto the block down here. They'll be clipped on to the side of the block back here behind the idler pulley. So if it's there, take that off, unclip it from the block. Most of them's just from the age, the tape's already gave up. And you want to feed, pull the wire out here. If you've got a 0304, early 05, unplug your EBP sensor. Not all of them have them up here. As you can see now with that off, I'm getting it out. Some of them are pretty tricky trying to get the hard shell connector out and also here where it shows that it clips on. So now with it out, as you can see, I have the whole length of the wire to where I can work on it and replace it out of the loom. I'm gonna go ahead and cut into here, open it up, and replace it. And you can see here that the one I got with the leads, I have plenty of wire to make my repair with even extra, which makes it nice. So the least splice, less splices in it, the better off I'm going to be. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm trying to do this one-handed, so I have to keep stopping and doing different things. But to cut the conduit away from it, I just take a razor blade and make a real light cut to where I'm just more or less cutting the tape, not going into any of the wires or touching the wires. So make sure you're real careful with this because if you damage your, your wiring, of course you're going to have issues which will make it a lot worse. So just cut it easy then peel it back. And here we are with the wire out, the loom opened up. A couple things you want to look for when you're in this position. Now all this conduit, it, they all have a slit in it so you can take it off and peel it and put it right back on. This is the piece that came out of the loom that was in between the EBP sensor wire and here. So I'm gonna put that back on. But what I wanna bring to your attention right now is if this is all swollen or this is all real bad shape, because if, if these had fuel leaks and your wire's actually swollen, then a repair on here is probably not going to hold so you don't want to try to do it you're not going to have any good luck the, the um, so but if it's in this kind of shape here to where it's good we just have a break somewhere that we're not be able to pick it up so we're going to go ahead and try to repair this one but again if this is all swollen full of fuel and your wires are all like they're melted together from the fuel being in there don't try to make a repair you're not going to be happy it's a big waste of time so with this one I'm going to go ahead and go on with it 
not too rotted or swollen or if you don't have any issues I'm actually unpeeling I'm peeling this one back it's just aluminum foil you can take it and keep on unwrapping it and you can save it or just any type of foil if you want to put the shielding back on and also same way with the grounding wire it's nothing special about it I'm just going to save both of this and put it back on the replacement piece I have here so I'll just continue to unwrap this straighten it up and I'm going to reuse it but if you can't like you know again if it's damaged just get yourself some foil and put on it and save the grounding wire we'll put it right back in splice it in there okay this only took like five minutes it's not that big of a deal so it shouldn't be that that hard you just want to slowly peel the tape off of this once I pull, pull the tape off I went ahead and took the the shielding off so I still have my grounding wire that's good the shield is still good so I have the grounding wire and the shield still good. And I have my replacement one here from Diesel Truck Parts Direct. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it and fix it up here. I guess I'll tell you I'm gonna solder it. That way people don't start getting on me for saying crimped wire connectors. So once I do that, make my repair here, get it to the right length. I'll go ahead and wrap it and tape it. I was able to save all the conduit here. Be able to put that all back on. It should be to have this one back together here. Got it all taped and soldered in. Got the wrap back around it, the shielding. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up and put the conduit around it and get it back connected. Here's another trick. If you don't like working with a big old roll of wire, take yourself a bolt, get it started on here pretty straight. Okay, now I have a lot smaller roll of tape to work with. As I'm going around the wires, I don't have this big one I have to sling along. It makes it a lot easier to work with. Now when I get closer in a tight spot, it's a whole lot easier to work with just this small roll. Not with one hand, but it's a whole lot easier. You get the idea here of what I'm talking about. I can get a whole lot closer and get all the way up into the wire loom. Here's another place a smaller spool comes in handy trying to feed it around here when you have to get in between here and the valve cover. Okay, here we are with it all done, taped back up, spliced in, shielded, it, bracket, retaining bracket all put back in place. So I'm going to go ahead and feed it down through there and route it and reconnect it. Also, I don't know if you notice or not, but this right here, the insulation and the little plastic piece in here that gives it strength is still stuck inside here. Make sure when you pull off your EBP connectors that you do have the little plastic piece. It's usually gray or blue. Make sure you still have that and also the, the seal that's inside here. So make sure those are on there when you go back in. The, the EBP controls the turbo, but still make sure that you have it. When you feed it through, you probably find out that it's better if you feed it through in increments. It has to be behind the thermostat housing here and behind the belt pulley. In the, the, the same way with the hose. So just go in between the lines here, feed it down in behind the cover. I'm gonna have to set the phone down here in a second and grab it. You can see it coming through right there, but I'll grab it. I wanna help feed it through with a bracket. Just make sure that you're behind, again, behind the hose and come down there in the gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and fish it the rest of the way down. Okay, here we have it all installed ran and route it properly okay here we have it all wrapped up taped and routed properly ready to put the charger cooler hose and air filter back on if this helps you please like and subscribe thank you